just so everybody knows we are live. Are we, um, do we think we're all here? One, two, three, four, five. Are we waiting for anyone? Linda's not able to make it. I don't see Estrita on this screen. So we have Nancy, Joanne, Joanne, Lynn, Nancy, Rebecca, and me. That's five. Oh, my computer is going to maybe die in a moment. Me too. That's six. Uh, that's why we have plugs. <laughs> well, I thought mine was plugged in. Mine is plugged in. Okay. If that's the only issue we have with technology right now, I'm pretty feeling pretty good about that. Okay. I may have to hold the plug the whole time. <laughs> Okay, are, so we have, what did we decide? We have six or five? You're, you're only missing Estrita and Linda. Yeah. Okay. So Linda okay. will not be here. Okay. But Estrita should pop on here anytime, I think. Um, so I got to be honest, it's been a little while since I've shared an all remote one, and I can't exactly remember how we start. Do we have to, we don't have to do a roll call to start. No. No. Okay. No. So, do we want to go right into the um, public input? Sure. Yeah, do that. Well, I get some. Am I? I'm not. Okay. Here we go. Uh, the first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board cha chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, uh, cannot be made during public Im input. And there is a link that if you have a comment that to set to us, click on the link and type in your comment. Okay. Do we have any public input tonight? We have one statement. Let me make sure it's still just the one. Yep. Um, so Mr. Jared Tevison of North Berwick states, my wife teaches at Noble High School and I have watched her workload increase with the dual nature of synchronous and asynchronous teaching. I've also watched her anxiety grow with the frequent calls as more and more students and staff test positive. There is a tried and tested model in place for remote teaching. And as cases are on the rise in our area at an alarming rate, I strongly advocate for a return to the remote model. That is the whole of public input at this moment. All right. Um, Sue. Yes. I was just trying to double check the agenda uh -huh. I mean, the uh, meet in minutes for the yep. ones that we're going to approve shortly. And yep. you're actively editing it with that public comment. Okay. Well, I have a copy, too, of the other one. So hold on one second. Thank you. <laughs> I made a copy of a copy. I have the other minutes. So I will get onto those and reset the, to the original. Thank oh, you. It's the two. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we want to revisit the, the minutes at the end? No, nope, I'll set them up. In just as, If you give me a minute, I will reset them. Version history, version history, and go back to this one. Okay, let's try this version. Okay, you should be fine. Okay. Okay, so you should be good to go now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 
Um, this is not, um, I, I don't know that it's necessarily an omission, but um, when we were talking about school nutrition and the snow days, and this is just more for me, like, if I'm looking back, I always, if, my notes don't always kind of line up with the different dates, but I, I do think that it was an a interesting point to note when we were talking about school nutrition that we see, I already can't hundred percent remember, but that once those meals went out, we were told that we can't do that again, or we can't, um, we can't like feed the same number of kids that were on. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it would be helpful to add that in just because, um, it was something that we talked about. It was also, I'm not sure. I don't know. That was, just something that was worth noting, I thought. Okay. Yeah, I, we, did talk, we can update that. Yeah. Yeah, we can update that. Um, any other changes or can we get a motion to accept those minutes? I'll make the motion. This is Nancy to accept the minutes. I'll second That's it. it. Okay. Thank you. And are we, I think we can do an all in favor. I'm just trying to see if there's somebody I can't see. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, so can we just do a, a show of hands for all in favor? Okay. All right. <clears throat> and so... January calendar, you have a lot of information for us here. I think we do. So before we start talking about January, we just wanna share some information for this week. Uh, we, we're going to start with how we typically start with just some attendance information. And then Amy is on and she's going to talk about our active cases. Um, so you have a good sense of that. Um, and then we wanna talk about um, next week and then January. So we have a couple things to kind of go through tonight. So first of all, we'll talk about student attendance. Um, our low was 87% um, and our high has been 96% in attendance. And our staff attendance for the week has been a low of 94 and a high of 97. So those are our attendance ratings um, for this week thus far. Um, Amy, would you please um, start talking about our cases, please? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So um, per the community letter that went out earlier today um, was our latest update. Uh, we've got the active outbreaks in three of our schools. Uh, we did meet with the CDC today, and per their definition of the three cases within 14 days of each other not occurring in the same household, so not siblings, um, is their definition of the outbreak status. And so they meet with us, uh, they look into it a little bit more, and they determine if we are able to maintain cleaning and staffing, they don't need to advise us to shut the school. Um, of course, they leave it up to us at any point to make that decision. Um, with, the, with the update of the four additional cases that we got that was included in that letter, uh, those individuals, uh, like it states, were not present in school during their infectious period. So hence, we did not have to move the classes to remote learning. And that is the piece that takes up the most of our time, like we described last week. 
getting a positive case that was in the classroom while they were considered infectious, uh, identifying the close contacts, notifying all those families. That's the time consuming part with a lot of players involved, uh, Sue, Audra, myself, the principal, the school nurse. If that was the case, when we were notified of those three cases within a short period of time, that would have been a situation where we may have made the decision to take, like we need to stop. It's gonna take us a long time to make all these notifications and by chance not having school would be the best option to keep those kids out of school uh, until we could notify them through the right channels. So again, the CDC was um, very supportive of our process. Uh, they didn't really have much to add with what we've already done. And uh, it, was, um, it, was, it was also a member from the DEO, actually two members from the Department of Education there as well. And that's their standard procedure for any school in the state of Maine who have the three cases within 14 days. Thank you. So can you just talk in general terms about, um, let's see, we have three buildings that we are doing investigations on, outbreak investigations on, and then we have a few buildings that haven't had a case for, for some time. Right, so currently, uh, like the letter mentioned, um, no, the Noble High School building, the Noble High School students. So this is where it gets a little tricky because we moved kids around all over the place. It's our Noble High School 8 through 12 that's currently the outbreak investigation, not the grade 6, 7 days. So we're still, we are still categorizing high school like we always have. Like, even though the younger kids are technically using the building, they're separated. So when we say middle school, we mean the 6th and 7th graders, not necessarily the middle school building. Right. So each time Audra puts out the correspondence, if it's at the physical middle school building, she indicates the middle school building slash four or five. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So like I said, the Noble High School with the open outbreak, we've got four active cases. And for us to wrap our brains around active cases, we're saying for, within 14 days of current of now. Uh, Noble Middle School, we've got one. The four or five building, we have three. The Knowlton School, there is one. Hussey School, one. North Berwick Elementary, none. Lebanon Elementary, none. Hanson School, one. However, that individual was not in school during infectious period, um, so, and Mary heard none. Okay, so Amy, I know you've said this, um, so my apologies, but so the Hanson School, I think you just said that one was not in school. So, but does that number still count towards our, like the counts that we look at towards whether or not we have to close that building? That one in particular, I don't believe so. So if the, if the person, tested and they were not in school two weeks prior to their test or their symptoms it doesn't count against us okay so for the high school that's, that's yeah. considered their exposure period like they could have been exposed at school okay so for the high schools for um like if one of those, if one of one or two of those had not been in the school during their exposure period, does that number not count? I'm just trying to figure out, well, I mean, I'm sure you'll sum it up. I'm just trying to figure out like, what does this all add up to? <laughs> right. So like I said, there was the three, an initial that set us into three within the 14 days that set us into the initial outbreak investigation. And then it added another one. Um, and in, Every time I add a new one, or the CDC adds a new one, they, yep, yeah, we're just going to keep an eye on it, keep doing what you're doing. Just because there's three or four doesn't mean we need to close okay. if you're able to keep with sanitizing and staffing. 
Okay. Has the CDC been able to determine if any of these are connected? Or are they, they all just their own individual? They haven't yet uh, found any of that. And for us, I mean, the best way we can um, make sense of it is that each time we've moved a class to remote learning, the individual, like everyone in that classroom who has tested has not tested positive. Uh, the only case is that in the four <laughs> five building uh two students tested positive in the same classroom two individuals so other than that are do we feel like um we're it's still fairly safe to say that there has not been any in school um transmission i mean it's like i said with each class that we move to remote learning, the results that we've gotten back haven't indicated that. Whether anyone can say where each of these cases contracted it is <clears throat> is hard to hard to say. Okay, and especially with the the increase in cases happening statewide, and of course in York County, it's it's everywhere. Can you update the change in playbook? Anything that was changed that we should be made aware of? Uh, just the tough change that happened from the 14 day to the 10 day quarantine period, both for travel and infectious um, people who are infected with COVID. Uh, the state of Maine did adopt that protocol that okay. the federal CDC put out. And they left it up to individual institutions to if they were going to stay with the 14 day or go with the 10. I know that some schools in Maine are still sticking with the 14 and we felt um, that we could go with the 10. Same thing with businesses, I believe, are given the opportunity to decide what is best for them. There's also a lot less. Um direct guidance from the CDC, I think, than we had initially had. And now there's, because I'm sure it's with the uptick and everything, they're, they're leaving a lot um, at the local hands and decisions. So. Yeah, they're stretched a little thin right now. Yeah, very much so. The, like today when we met with them for the sort of the outbreak investigation piece, there was no, it was, there was just really no direction. It was just a very, um, it felt very informal. Um, much different than the one we had, what, three weeks ago ish. And uh, there was no, and they, they did not give us any, <laughs> any direction. They're at probably all. F focusing direction on when they think there's a real um, compliance issue of some sort. And, yeah. you know, right. So one, one thing that we did want to um, propose for you to discuss is um, we would like to propose that we go remote next Thursday and Friday, in addition to the following Monday and Tuesday, which you had already um, talked about last week, and we decided that. Uh, the reason why we are asking for that to be considered is because um, it really helped us in uh, thanks when we closed for Thanksgiving break. Having those days right before the Thanksgiving break really allowed us the time to make the contacts that we needed to make and seeing the activity that we've had this week and knowing that we could likely have the same kind or a little more activity than we do now. Uh, we think that that would give us time to be able to contact families prior to the holiday um, if we needed to get in touch with them. Amy, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more about that. Right, so we're really thinking um, about how it worked out well with the last day on that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Um, cases did trickle in through those days prior to Thanksgiving through the weekend as well. And that um, really setting ourselves up to not have to be under the pressure to find families on the 24th and the 25th. I mean, contacting them in the middle of their plans, uh, giving us the, 
the few days buffer would help prevent that because the bodies would not be in school and be considered infectious at the time. Uh, like I said, the handful of cases that we got in the last couple days have thankfully been people who knew they were possibly in contact with someone and so they stayed out of our buildings. And so even though they're one of ours, they were here two weeks before, they weren't here during that infectious period that forced us to move a class to remote learning and to identify all the people that they had been in contact with and then having to quarantine them from school and also in their personal lives. I just feel like as a, as a parent and uh, you know, planning what you are going to plan for Christmas, however that's going to look like this year, to get the call three days ahead of time to say, well, you can't do anything. You need to stay home for the 10 days. Is It, it would give us a little bit more of a buffer for that, I believe. Is it is it time to consider even more days closed than that? I mean, we know the numbers are going up. I know I'm always sounding like the doomsayer, um, but we did have more deaths today, I believe it was today, maybe it was yesterday, then at 9-11. I mean, this is going to get continue to get worse. And we're in a moment in the school year where we're headed into the winter break. And I know it's important for the students to have time with the teachers, but they're also beginning to think about Christmas. It's that between holiday, you know, it's that time of year that doesn't feel academically like as much gets done anyway. Mm. And I know that we have been very fortunate with our numbers in the school, but we have exactly been that. In addition to the good plan, we've been lucky. That's counting on that luck to continue at a time when everywhere we turn, I mean, this thing, deaths have now touched very close. I, 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 just, I just think that we're playing with fire at this point. I am hesitant to to continue to go remote as much as possible with everything that's going on. I think our schools are doing everything that they need to do. Our kids are in the safest location by being at school. And I think it, we should continue to try and send our kids to school as much as possible as they need it. Uh, the emotional toll that these kids are having is outrageous as well. Um, as just seen recently and the, um, the infectious rate, yes, we are seeing an uptick in infectious infectious rates. However, the effect on the children and um, is minimal in that aspect from the COVID side. I'd be concerned with moving it two days. I understand how it worked in the when the Thanksgiving break, but we got to factor in that if we take off the Thursday Friday, there's a grade of high school kids that will be out tomorrow they don't they wouldn't be going back to school after tomorrow um so we have to factor that in as well as you know what about those grades that are now going to have a whole extra week away from school um i'm a little torn on that side whether we move it to wednesday uh, instead of the friday but that's just that's me right now i have a question um so the, you're proposing next Thursday and Friday and then the following Monday and Tuesday and then back to school on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No, no, no. Christmas. That's the holiday. That's the holiday. That's Christmas. So school days would be Thursday, Friday. Remote school days would be Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Holiday would be Wednesday through January 3rd. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought you meant going back and forth. Yeah, no, no that's okay. Cool. So I, I mean, my, uh, if your recommendation is to go remote next Thursday, Friday, my, um, my first, I have a question and then a couple of comments, but my question is, do you feel like with what you know now, Amy, that, um, that we can get through, like, do you, is there a chance that if we make this decision that, I don't know, come Monday, we're going to have to say, sorry, we got to bump it up. Or do you feel like, do you feel confident with everything you know right now that, um, that we can make it till Thursday? Cause my, I, I would support whatever that recommendation is. I know you guys put a lot of thought into it. Um, as long as we 
don't think we're going to have to then make a different decision and have it be a day sooner or something. So do you guys feel confident? I mean, it's really, really hard to predict. <laughs> I, I honestly, when everybody, when somebody asks me, like, how are you doing or how's it going so far today? My answer is I'm taking it hour by hour. Yeah. Um, okay. This past Saturday was all day. Yeah. For Sue, Audra, I, and uh, the principals and schools involved. Um, and like I said, the, the cases went on my drive home the other day when I got the notification of the three cases that I did, uh, if those each had to involve close contact tracing, that could have been a tipping point. Thankfully, it wasn't. Okay. So, I mean, maybe... I know that all of the letters include this, but it, maybe it's worth a separate letter that just says, hey, look, over Thanksgiving, it worked really well that people that were in contact with someone gave us a heads up, maybe before they had symptoms or even were tested. So the way to get through this is, you know, kind of what your recommendation is. So if you think you've had contact, you know, just a reminder, don't send your kids to school. So I, I mean, I feel I, like I Audra put that in one of the most recent. Yeah. No, I think that it's been that in every letter, but I'm not, I, I, I don't know if, you know, maybe, if, I don't know, it, but I, it sounds like that maybe if people knew specifically that the decisions that they made over Thanksgiving, even though the cases are going up, that like the actions of keeping people out if they thought they had contact really did make a difference. I don't know. Yeah, it sure did. So I, I, um, you know, I'm, I am a fan of keeping kids in school as long as it's safe. Um, Astrida, the only thing I would say that I, that I, definitely disagree with is this is not a light time academically for these kids. They're, um, you know, there might be a handful of kids that are doing at the very young ages that are incorporating holidays into their learning, but the vast majority of these kids are actually have quite a lot of work right now. Mm -hmm. And there, anybody that's in middle school or high school is finishing their semester. So don't forget that because of our quarter system, these, these kids are now coming up on finishing an entire class that they do not have the rest of the year to make up on. So historically, you've had English for the whole year. And if you have struggled in the first half of the year, you've got a little bit of time to make it up. These grades are going to close and that's it for those classes. So for anybody that's in middle or high school, especially high school, it's actually they actually have a lot of work on their plates right now. So I would caution anybody against thinking that this is a light time of year. And then the only other thing that I would add is that, um, uh, and I, I shared this with Sue earlier in a message, but um, I mean, the feedback from these kids is is really starting to come back that they're, they're struggling. So it's, um, I think it's, I think we just have to really, 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 really make sure that we have systems in place that are looking out for their mental health, whether that's remote or in person. Um, but it's, it's, it's getting tough for them. And even, even some kids that normally you wouldn't think wanted yeah. to be in school, they're begging their parents. I need to be back in school. I have to be back in the classroom. I think it's really important that we do keep them there, but I think your plan of, of having the kids out those two days, is smart. And I think it's helpful to let the parents know the reasoning why. I, I think they might not understand that it's because of when you would become um, you the symptoms and they don't understand that it's that time frame. But I, I think that's a good plan. I agree that we need to keep the kids in as long as possible. And I agreed with Denise that the, the kids, I think they realize that every second they get now in school or online with a teacher, they know the value of it because I think kids really notice that they aren't where they should be and they, they're they stepping up their game. So I, I think this is a good plan and I think we should go forward with it. Wednesday is our remote day for, for students who are attending in person, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, not for everybody. No, no, it's just for some, right. Just the elementary. Oh, yeah. That's right. With yeah. the juniors, we definitely want to get one more day in with them. So we didn't. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. So, Who so, are the Thursday, Friday grades? Eighth and ninth. And tenth. Yeah. And tenth on Friday. Yeah, ninth and tenth. Yep. Yeah. Eighth and ninth. Yep. Eighth and ninth. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just just back to my thought about like communications. Um, I think with the extraordinary amount of sort of negative news, I do think it's worth really highlighting to families that even though the cases are going up, that the decisions that they made over the Thanksgiving holiday really did make a difference. And even just in their communication, I, I think that, I think that that'll, I think it'll go a long way just to, you know, I think a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices over Thanksgiving and they're about to do it again. And I think it's, it's it would be, I think it would be meaningful and impactful for them to know that it actually made a difference. I think I would agree with you, Denise. I think we heard from a lot of parents really proactive about keeping kiddos home and um, just totally changing their plans. So I would definitely try yeah. to highlight some of that because it's so important. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I agree. I think it's important to, to you know, explain to them how it worked in Thanksgiving and okay. how, why our intent is to try and get it to work for Christmas as well and how important it is that, having these extra days allow for the tracing to not be done because they're not in the, in the school during the exposure period. Right. right. And Plus our staff needs a break. Our, you guys, <laughs> our admin team, they need a couple of days off. <laughs> It's, well, like a, it's like a help us help you situation, you know, let's let, help us not call you on Christmas Eve. Like, right. Nobody <laughs> wants you to guys get Christmas Eve off. <laughs> hmm. okay. So yeah, I definitely support the, the Thursday, Friday going remote. Uh, the reason I was asking about Wednesday and, and I did have it in my head wrong. I forgot it was just elementary grades, but um, because I'm saying to myself, well, what's, What's the difference of Monday, Tuesday? And I think it's a hard right now is a hard line because I think tomorrow's gonna a lot more. You know, if it if everything kind of stays as it is, then Monday, Tuesday might be okay. You know, but if tomorrow the numbers go up, then I would I, I almost would want to hold the week. Um, but I, I'm kind of in the middle on that one. But definitely for the Thursday, Friday, I do think it's a good idea to go remote. So Audra and I were talking before the board meeting because this is so fluid, like we want, we want whatever support or direction that you're going to give us. And then, and then tomorrow happens and we don't, we don't know if it's going to be us saying we may have to do something sooner. So thank you for that, Stephanie. I think the reality of it is, is that it is going to be hour by hour kind of stuff. It's what Amy's been dealing with. And by the way, Amy has been incredible. She's, she's like, I don't even know what to say. It's She's been fabulous in, in leading all of this. Um, but, but on the other hand, the CDC told us today, schools are safe. Like that's the best place for kids. And we, we also believe that. Um, part of that is, as we were talking about, it's because we follow the rules, right? Everybody's wearing their masks. Everybody's got dry chapped hands because they wash their hands all the time. <laughs> We're all doing, and and teachers are asking, and and kids are following through with all of these things. There, everybody's trying really hard to stay here. So balancing a streeter, which I totally understand where a street is coming from, and where you guys are coming from in terms of keeping kids in school, we're feeling there is definitely a tug <laughs> as we try to figure this out. So I just say, be prepared. Right, that's all we can do. Yeah. Lynn or Nancy, do either of you guys have any um, thoughts on any of this? Questions, input? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think we should keep him at school as long as we can. But uh, yeah, I totally understand both sides. So, you know, I would be good with either one. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. Um, question: Was the new technology that we got has the teachers been able to start using that? Um, like, will they be in a better place from a technology standpoint going into this remote time? Yes. All week they've been picking up their oh, okay. their new technology. So playing Chris, with you talk about that? yeah, that would be because I know that that was one of the biggest issues in the past. Or he's hiding from us. He doesn't really want to talk to us. <laughs> 
Well, I was just going to say, um, yeah. I think. Oh, I do. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I like um, tend to agree with Estrita mostly that, you know, because the numbers are very scary. But then um, also I can see that the school's doing a really good job of handling when cases do come up. So um, I'm really comfortable letting the school personnel make that decision because it, there's probably not going to be enough time to have a meeting if something happens. So, you know, I think you guys got a pretty good sense of when it becomes dangerous when you need to close down. Thank you. So where does this leave us for after Christmas? Mm -hmm. So that's the next question. Part two of the question. <laughs> um, just we our our start date back is um, January fourth, and um, just in talking or hearing from <clears throat> different schools, and Amy was on the list, the nurse list serve today. Um, so there was a question about when when different schools are returning, and it does sound like there are a fair amount of schools that are considering delaying in person by a week because of that ten day that ten day quarantine or that ten day window. Um, so if that was the case for number sake for us, that would be looking at starting that following Monday in person on the 11th. So starting after remote, Christmas that would weekend, it gives us one, two full weeks and then an extra weekend. Basically. Yeah, pretty much. Right. And then, you know, New Year's is in there, which we realize is a holiday, but it's a different kind of a holiday. So, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen on New Year's, you know? Nothing's going to happen on New Year's. No one's going <laughs> well, it's all going to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> it's all going to vanish. 2021 is going to start and it's all gone. Oh, thank you, Travis. I totally forgot that was on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> So that gives us, yeah, it gives us two full weeks. Yeah, I would support the start of in person on the eleventh, remote on the fourth. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then, I mean, we will know. You know, we'll know during that. Well, we'll know ongoing, but we'll certainly know during that week what it looks like. Um, right. So, and one thing that we can do for you, which um, we will collect information from the schools, from uh, you know, if parents have called in, you know, close to the well, we'll obviously have the information January fourth when we're doing the remote learning. But if we have anything ahead of that, if we hear of any cases or anything, we can certainly send you little updates on what that looks like, number wise, staff wise. Um, and throughout that week. Well, we have a meeting on the 7th anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what oh, we yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. And then if we decide we have to push out another week, then that brings us through that long weekend. Right. Which, okay. I think that's also important to include in the the letter aspect is that you know the effect that having those extra 10 days will help keep that uh close contact list short okay yeah okay i mean i think it, i think it's obvious that it from what it sounds like where we haven't had a whole lot of close contacts that our residents are really understanding the importance of keeping your kids home when you're feeling ill or your close contacts or you don't expose in other kids. I know we still have some, but we haven't had as many with all these active cases that we have had recently. So it seems like everybody's working together on this and it's working well. So I would agree. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So what do you need from us? Um, you don't need any, we don't need to vote on this. This You just sort of wanted the the thumbs up. Are there any other, like, any other comments about that sec that week? Is everybody feeling like this is a plan that works? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. They're hard decisions. Yeah. It helps with the different time. Yeah. And then when is the end of the semester? Is this the 18th or the 25th? Mm, oh, I'm looking at the wrong month. Hold on. The um, 15th or the 22nd? Hold on. I got my calendar right here. And uh, the second, the first semester is January 22nd. Okay. So I would just, you know, it, especially if we have to go remote longer or, or it, whatever, however we do it, I guess I would just make sure that we're really looking ahead at kids that are not passing mm -hmm. and let's do whatever we can um, to get, you know, whatever we can to get them the help that they need. But yeah, I would very much want to know that we're, we're taking a proactive look at where those kids are doing. Cause I, I know that there's, I know there's a lot of kids struggling and they're, they are quiet about it. Anybody yeah. struggling is quiet about it, honestly. Yeah. So I, I just, if I know that, it, I know the teachers are already working so hard, mm -hmm. uh, but if there's, if we can just make sure that we're reaching out as much as possible. And yeah. Yeah. Is it worth considering given the duration of this and that we don't yet really have an end in sight? Great, the vaccines are on the horizon, but the distribution isn't in place. Travis says January 1st, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Boy, do I wish. But is there merit into, and, and maybe you guys have already been thinking about this, moving back to the pass fail that we that we instituted last year as an emergency measure? It's not a great way in the long term, but this is this is the same extenuating circumstances that we had last spring, and we're not done yet. Yes, but um, I think the teachers are more prepared yeah. to, um, teaching this way, and I and, the, and at least the kids are somewhat comfortable with it. I don't think it's your best type of education ever. But, but I no, mean, we, but but if 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 every if the kids are that stressed, um, I mean, it's going to impact their performance too. Even just from that that mm -hmm. point of view, that they're not operating with the best cards at the moment because of the situation and the stress is at home. I mean, maybe mom and dad don't have a job, or certainly there's there's problems all over the place yeah. um, because the impact of this is pretty much every aspect of life. Um, and then to expect the student to pull down A's is a lot. I'm just putting it out there. We, we considered yeah. it last year. I think, and thought it was double, I think there's a double piece to this, Estrita. For some kids, that might be um, a stress reliever. For a lot of kids, it's it increases stress that they don't have um, a measure. measure. Yeah, that and and like putting that structure in place for for kids and for adults and teachers is pretty helpful. But I think I mean we can we'll talk with it with our with the administrative team as to what we as we go forward. If this doesn't start to ease up a little bit, we can certainly. There's always that. Yeah, where yeah. I'm coming from is to yeah. what can we do yeah. for the stress that the kids are going through. And also, what can we do for the staff, including you guys, once this hurricane has passed? Because, boy, is there going to be a crash. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Everyone's going to be, everyone's already exhausted. But once the race is run, won, that adrenaline is going to just. I don't, I don't know. I haven't had any adrenaline lately. but <laughs> <laughs> You've used it all up. Yeah, I feel like it. So, you know, just a, a related, but um, like I think Travis and I might be the only ones like from a firsthand um, who are going through this right now. But from a college application process, mm -hmm. it is interesting that the colleges really did switch. I'm not using the P word, the pivot word, but um, mm -hmm. they really did adjust quickly to knowing their incoming audience. And yep. the applications are very holistic when it's and and I'm I this is I'm not saying that they're you know still the smartest kids are going to get into the best schools I don't think anything's going to change really but 
I will say that the application process, they are, they are giving um, ample opportunity for kids to tell their story in a, in a, some really interesting ways. And um, it'll be, you know, we probably won't know for a year or two how that really plays out. Yeah. Um, I don't, again, I don't totally buy that it's going to make much of a difference in the end. I still think that the, you know, the kids in the wealthiest areas with the fanciest computers and technology and best, you know, working spaces are still going to end up, you know, going to those schools. But I do, I really do think that, um, I think they're factoring in the community, how hard a community was hit, you know, how the kids are doing. So it is, it, it this is all one giant social experiment, but, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but they are at least, they are at least, going through the motions of, of getting that whole story. Yep. I Can I have a point I of clarification? I just have one comment about the pass fail thing. I think that gives kids an opportunity to just check out because it's not, this isn't the most ideal learning situation. And I think a lot of kids would just say, oh, great. Now I, I can just skate. And I think, what kids need is to know that the work that they're doing is important. And when you put a pass fail on it, it doesn't seem quite as important as it did before. So personally, I'd like to see us struggle through with getting kids getting grades. And if we have to address it at a different time, then let's do it. We can get creative. That's the story of the century right now is how creative can we get? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with um, Joanne because I, I saw I, I I saw that where people were just getting um, you know when they had the pass fail they just kind of checked out and then at the very end they were like oh I got to get some of this work in so I can pass mm -hmm. uh, I think having the grades I think that the other difference is is that we are way more structured in our remote right now than we were in March mm -hmm. so that makes it a lot easier to give, to keep the grades so I wouldn't I wouldn't want to change any of the grades I'd keep them just as they are. All right, Nancy, you're up. Sorry. Go, Nancy. <laughs> Just a point of clarification. So next Thursday and Friday, they're going to still do remote learning? Are they going, or is that vacation? No, nope, that's remote learning. Okay. So for high schoolers, Thursday, that always went into the new schedule. So, so Thursday, night. Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. Yes. It's all remote. Yes. yes. And then when they come back on the 4th, that's that's remote well, for them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just making sure you had it right. Yes. Yes. So, so they'll be switching to that other schedule i can't remember what you called it but like the kids for the kids the older kids that didn't have classes on thursday friday they now will be switch they will have classes on those days or I, whatever it is i don't remember I think, I think what you're asking is that are they going to the red the schedule? red schedule they go to the red schedule yeah okay yeah. and already i think the yellow schedule the the revised yellow has offered a lot more contact yeah so the red yeah. schedule will be the the one question that we got was uh, the, that I heard of in the Thanksgiving thing is what schedule are we going to? So we definitely right. need to make sure that we communicate that the high yeah. school kids, the middle yeah. school kids are going yeah. to the red schedule yeah. on Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Everybody else is just going to remote. Right. Yes. I think the teachers did a really good job communicating directly with the kids. So for the kids that are old enough to manage their schedules, it, I think yeah. it was mostly fine. I think it was those younger or middle ones where the parents are very much involved in managing the right. schedule and they didn't necessarily understand what it, what that looked like. Right. We will try yeah, to be absolutely. Clearer. clearer. Okay. So we're looking at going remote from the 17th through the 8th. Yes. And then we've got that weekend and then we come back on the 11th for in person. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, this is, do we have a board meeting next Thursday and should we plan for that to be remote again? If everything's remote? Or do we want to? Yes, I think I think we have to follow the system. If we are sending them remote, we got to be remote right. too. Right. Here's the question: Do we need to meet next week? 
Yes, I think I we should be meeting. I think we should be meeting every week just to make sure that we're still being updated. It'll be a short meeting, but that is okay. I think that's fine. I think that'll be helpful to go into the holidays and then maybe we don't meet on the 24th. <laughs> no, we're not going to no, we're not going to the 24th. <laughs> but, you know, maybe we can get an e if there's an email update over the holidays, but yes. I would agree but just based on the dates that it would be helpful, even if it is just a brief, yeah. um, you know, yeah. uh, we can get an update. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Were there any other? Um, Let's see. Do we have any other employment? We okay. don't have any. No, we don't. Okay. And how about any? Does anyone have any others? I had a non COVID uh, what? question. <laughs> I know. Isn't it nice? <laughs> That exists, the <laughs> non-COVID stuff. <laughs> I was just wondering, that student that uh, we voted in, how are they doing? Just a little update on that. Oh, we'll find out. What? The, re the we're talking about the return. We had a student that, that had, um, we re-entered, we re-admitted. Yes. Yeah. We can get that. Yeah, we can't talk. I don't think that's a general meeting oh, oh. conversation. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know that we're partway into the year, but um, at one point we had talked about whether or not it still made sense to have a student rep to the board this year. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's um, anybody has any suggestions on? It's a crazy year to do that, but it, maybe if there was a student that was interested, they certainly could learn ways to make difficult decisions. Yes. <laughs> and, and I will say that we're one, not. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that I am really missing is any kind of updates from the student body and how are they getting creative and what clubs are they managing to do? So I, I, I personally would love to open that up. Um, I don't know if that's who we would go through for that, but a junior or a senior, um, you know, I, I, I always really enjoyed having that context. Okay. Um, can can we also add to the agenda next week uh, an update on the social emotional stuff and what we're doing and the uptick that we're trying to push out there mm -hmm. um, just so that we at least are updated on where we're at with that. Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and while we're at it, um, <laughs> the as we go into – the new year, um, I, I mean, obviously everybody has been fully consumed with this, but, um, you know, in the past, it, you know, in the way back past, um, you know, every so often we would have an update from a teacher on a new learning platform or something. So I guess as we go into January, I would love, even if it was once a month to have you know, a special guest, um, but somebody who can join a board meeting and, and just kind of reconnect us with what's going on in the classrooms. Um, because it's, it, I mean, it, it, I guess it's arguably even more important now. Um, and whether that be technology or just straight up, how are the kids reading? You know, yeah. what's, yes. what's working in this new Is that why we're here? Oh, yeah. that's why we're here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teach him to read. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, I, I'd love as we sort of, you know, the, we're going to, before we know it, we're going to be doing budgets and spring stuff and all of that. So I would just love to um, try to have a, a reminder of kind of, I guess, just get back okay. to the kids and find out what, what's going on there. Okay. Any other, anything else? Do you guys know if it's this week we get reviewed again, or is it next week? Do we have any clue what their system is? I think it's weekly, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right now? Yeah. I, I thought it was supposed to be weekly every time we were yellow, but it hasn't. they haven't followed that pattern. So yeah, They haven't. No, I think it is this tomorrow. has definitely been a changing process as yeah. we've along. Yeah. The absolutes are no longer absolutes, for sure. Well, and I guess that's the other thing. They could just turn everybody red, and then none of our decisions really yeah. will make a difference. But... 
I don't have like, it's not like they're really happen. leaving they're they're leaving it up to districts that are yeah. that have good plans in place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't foresee the state turning us red again nope. because nope. of how safe the schools have been and how the systems work in. Yeah. yeah. Right. And just what happens when you turn a state red, right? There's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of economic issues. So yeah, I'd be surprised as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Checking um, public input one more time. I don't think there's any more. Nope. So we're good on that. Okay. Can we get a motion? To adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. This is Nancy. Thank you. And.